are you ready for season three of Discography? Yeah! We're jumping into the deep end of The Who. Not only will we go through every Studio Who album in great detail, but their story is often told between albums, so we'll be touching on non-album singles, the solo works of Keith Moon, John Entwistle, Roger Daltrey, and Pete Townsend, and some of the events that would make a record begin as a concept and land as something that would universally change the world. Discography returns to Consequence Podcast Network in January of 2019. Until then, be lucky. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, before we get started, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. You can listen on YouTube, on Spotify, anywhere you get your favorite podcasts from. iTunes, Apple Podcasts. We put out interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at Consequence of Sound. We'll love to keep you up to date. I'm Kyle Merritt. Today, my guest is the band Girlpool. Cleo and Harmony have just uh, completed a fantastic brand new record called What Chaos is Imaginary. And there seems to be two big themes that a lot of folks are talking about with this record. Uh, one, it's very different sounding from their previous work, and one of the reasons is because they have wrote separately for the first time. The other being Cleo Tucker in the middle of a gender flow and transition, taking steroids that lowered their voice. So you actually get a very different sounding band on top of that. <laughs> so we'll get the stories behind both of those, how they influenced and affected this record, and we'll hear about some of the songs as well, like Pretty, Swamp and Bay, Hoax and Shrine and Roses. And then we'll end on an interesting sociological study about how uh, lyrics, very personal moments for an artist, are become teenagers' usernames, handles, across the internet, giving them a very different context. Talking about the record, What Chaos is Imaginary, it's Kyle Meredith with Girlpool. Hello. Hi. Well, let me first do my congratulations for What Chaos is Imaginary and what another fantastic record you all have done. Thank you. Yeah. I, I know there's several stories that go along with this, with this album, and, and I'd like to hear about them too, but uh, maybe we start with the different cities, because for the first time, you know, I think that's one of the things when people hear it, like, it's sort of two different sounds going on here, so when, that, that has a lot to do with you all living in different cities, right? We were living in different places at some point, yeah, but not consistently. And I guess that's it, because, you know, I don't know, it does feel like there's two styles working on this record, so if it's not exactly all of that, what would that be attributed to? Our last albums, like, a lot of the songs were written together, and on this one, we just sort of, like, compiled, like, a collection of songs each that we have worked on, like, over the like, past few years, and we, like, were very familiar with each other's, these songs specifically, just because we kind of, like witness them be formed uh but like weren't like writing them together so i think that the reason why it's like kind of sonically like uh, all over the place is because like it's a collection of like many different moments and like different different like periods of inspiration that we both had separately is it a challenge then to make it an album, a girl pull album, and I'll say that sort of italicized in that way, or is that even a concern? I mean, we thought about, like, how are we going to make this a cohesive piece, really? But I think that, like, the candidness of it being, like, here and there is part of the album. And at this point, we just kind of hear it, like, it sounds like it all belongs together because, like, we're so familiar with it. Now it represents, like, one period of time where we were, like, putting it all together. So, like, there are so many like things that we like associate these songs with now, like when they were written, when they were arranged, when they were recorded, and now they're like now it feels like a family of music. And I think that like when we were recording, we did like do specific things to like make it sound, uh, make the song sound related. Like we kept like some similar like vocal sounds, like um, and effects on like our vocals to like push it through. And I don't know. I feel like now it does kind of flow. Like we feel like it does flow. Uh, organically you know, like the first time i heard it i mean it's a it is a little bit of whiplash in there but but you say with each listen it starts to feel together and i do love that about it personally just kind of how it works all the way like that it's it's quite different from anything else i'm listening to in that sense 
Mm, yeah. And it does expand on your sound, but without getting too busy. And I think that's one of the impressive parts in that. And and I don't know if that's just by chance, but but is that a challenge as well when you're kind of putting it together like this to not construct too much on top of it as you're experimenting with new sounds? Totally. I think we both have very, like, both minimalist instincts, but then also kind of err on the side of loving when things really, like, blossom in a really, like, immersive way so it's kind of trying to strike a balance between that I know you talk about minimalism uh cleo i think i read somewhere recently a quote where you said i'm so over rock music <laughs> <laughs> is that is that worth explaining um yeah i mean i don't know i think that like i just uh, when we were recording this album i was already like working on songs that didn't sound like the songs that we were recording so it kind of felt like like I wasn't like inspired to like write more music that sounded like the songs that we were recording so it was kind of like oh I'm like this is a relic in time that I'm just like getting out you know um, and I just wasn't writing songs like that I mean I still will sit down and sometimes like write a song that's like that is rocky but I, I've been more interested in like experimenting with like different kinds of sounds. And then Harmony, it was song like Hoax and Shrine. And, and I guess this goes back to what I was talking to, you know, to, to keep something that minimal, like what's the temptation of going, oh, it's, it's very sparse and this is exactly how it should be. Yeah. I feel like that song we tried like exploring what it would be like with more instrumentation. And there's something just so um, kind of like quiet about the song itself, like what it's, communicating i feel like it felt like it kind of drew away from the delicateness of it fragile a song like that yeah. almost yeah and, and pretty that's an uh, so i read that's an older song right yeah i wrote that when i was about 16 or 17 so how do you or, or do you do you attempt to reconnect yourself with that moment or or do you try to make it a new moment honestly that song is still like very there's certain emotions I feel like in a person that are kind of like forever in a weird way because they're implant in your DNA. And I feel like that song comes from a really like genetic place for me of like part of who I am because it's like, it's kind of about my childhood and growing up in LA and feeling like unbelonging and then investing in the wrong people when you would find belonging and just like the pain of that, you know? So it's kind of like, something I still struggle with honestly like trying to figure out who you can rely on and how to feel not isolated is really hard for I think everyone we all seek family and community but at what cost are we like doing that at the same time I mean there are certain words that I feel like are coming up with a lot from a lot of artists right now even beyond music and, and isolation being one of those there's a big word in the title you know one of the songs as well I mean the word chaos seems like a bullseye for 2019. What does that word mean for you all right now? For me, it's kind of like the cycles that we create for ourselves that we need to find escape from, like our our inner um, patterns and like troubles that kind of repeat endlessly because we're not aware of it. Mm -hmm. I relate. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> yeah i love that response that was really cute. <laughs> i relate cleo you, you know your, your voice dropping i think is the other part of this and i know a lot of people have concentrated on that too but you know the first time you hear it that is something that i think all of us kind of had to get used to for a second you know as you take the steroids that make your voice go down and i mean that literally gives the band a brand new sound like and again i'll ask that question but like what was the challenge with that and how was it different to write like that or or if it was at all well, it's funny because like I'm kind of I'm I'm writing I've been writing now and like within the past year or so like I've been writing with it now but a lot of the songs were written before my voice got lower so it was more about like rearranging those songs and like reconfiguring them to like a different vocal sound so I have a lot of demos of my songs that are um, like you know the vocals are pretty much like in an octave above. Uh, this new recorded version um so that was kind of more of like where uh the frustration lied was not really about writing it but like reworking the songs and like playing them in different keys and then like actually having to having to focus on my voice hitting the notes because you know we've we've toured since i started taking it and um 
my my vocal register is shifting while on tour. Just like I I I, I tend to just like step back from the mic and like not sing on a lot of songs like that was like last year and stuff it was just I was feeling pretty defeated and it was like a hard tour to get through but I did get through it and like now it's definitely like I'm more comfortable with it and I'm learning more about it but when I was recording it like um it was still shifting so it was like I actually had like the time to like take as many takes as I needed to to like really reach a note or something. So it was definitely like kind of a helpful process for me to get to know my voice was to like record these songs that I already knew, like what I wanted it to sound like. It was just like fitting this new, uh, like this new voice into them, which was, I think, helpful. And then, I mean, just the whole thing about getting used to that, that voice in your head, I think has got to be, you know, such an, uh, I mean, it's a unique situation, I guess, you know, Mm. after you've been singing like that for so long. Yeah, there's um, I don't, there's a line in Roses, you know, create the vague you need, and I'm probably taking it out of context here, but you know, I, I think you all talk about it being a record about transition in a lot of ways. I mean, is it fair to, be, to call it an album about moving on? That's interesting. I mean, I think that it, there's really no way to really say what the album is like about because it's just it's so many songs from so many different periods of our of our life, and so I feel like like the general like thesis of the album is like a collection of many moments that I think like represent like you know us um it's kind of like us uh singing songs in like evolved and like different like bodies and minds uh from when they were written um some some of them more than others some of them were written more recently and and it's not so much of a jump but um yeah it's kind of hard to like Say that it's about that. I mean, create the vague you need is it was about like not fitting into like assigned roles or whatever, you know. But um, I, I wouldn't say that that's like the theme of the record at all. No, I'm good about taking things out of context and accidentally projecting them on. So I apologize for that. <laughs> well, that song is about my experience with like just gender stuff. I'll throw in something a bit more on the trivial side here. Which one of you all works the uh, works your Twitter? I think it was just maybe- Harmony. Okay, so harmony. The, <laughs> this is this is one of those funny moments that I I kind of pulled back on and thought it's so interesting though because you were talking about, you know, as, as now as you notice that these lyrics, these really personal moments you are uh, that that you all write, are becoming just like handles and and usernames for for these kids out there and yeah, like that's I don't know you kind of laugh about it but there's still something heavier to that right. I wasn't saying it in a negative way. It's more like there's an absurdity to everything. Like, I think in general with life, if you can kind of like view things as more absurd than like punishing, that's a better perspective. But I I kind of like the polarity of like, okay, like, for example, like a Sylvia Plath poem, like this tortured poet, like very annoying, like silly, interesting point of reference, very taboo, but like she kills herself. But her poems turn into like, on Tumblr, people, like, captioning, like, Mad Girls Love Song or whatever, like, quotes from her poems. And it's, like, those things come from someone's, like, pain. But then it's also, like, about connecting to that same feeling. So it's kind of beautiful and also has this, like, funny triteness because I think of the way technology functions in our society. I think it's hilarious because it represents some type of, like, projection of self that is not real you know but i mean anything is really like equivalent to that though like nothing is completely sacred you know no i mean i'm i'm, I'm guilty uh, of that as well throughout the years of, of sort of doing that exact same thing especially online but it would have never occurred to me in that stretch it was just something that i was personally connecting to but then you know i'll i'll reuse that phrase of almost you know definitely taking it out of context from what that moment was when the artist wrote it and how I've just kind of yanked it right out of there. It's really interesting anyway, yeah. It's, a, it's yeah, it's more like an interesting sociological, like, development, I think. Right. Like, with the culture of usernames, like, instead of, like, having a name, like, first and last name, you have a username, and it's, like, that alias, like, that simulation, that, uh, what is it, avatar of yourself, like, what are you using to represent yourself? Where does it come from? And it's, like, oh, it comes from this person's mouth, or, like, their work, and, like, that work comes from this, like, I mean, everyone makes art for different reasons, so it's not, like, okay, like, if they use that, it's immediately, like, degrading to it or, like, anything. It's just, like, 
what it is, but it's just, I don't know, it just really is an interesting phenomenon that I'm fascinated by. Well, I'll use the obvious seg here to say how much I appreciate the art that you all make, and especially with this record, What Chaos is Imaginary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you both. Thanks for taking the time today. And again, congratulations on this. I can't wait to hear, you know, what comes next. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. My thanks to Cleo and Harmony of Girlpool. The new record is called What Chaos is Imaginary. Hey, don't forget, uh, before you get out of here, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this one, we put out interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at Consequence of Sound. We'd love to keep you up to date. Of course, you can follow us along really on YouTube, on Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts from. After that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. You can also find some bonus episodes of this series over there. Consequenceofsound.net, that's where you go when you want to get all of your music and film news. You can find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, and Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.